Hey folks, Randy Newberg here. You know that I love to hunt Arizona. Arizona is like one of my absolute top, no matter what your budget of time or money or whatever as a non-resident, you need to be applying in Arizona. And we've done these videos about Arizona a couple times, given some brief pointers. A few things have changed, so I wanna go through, explain it all again, and when we're all done, hopefully you're going to apply in Arizona and you're gonna go and hunt in Arizona. One thing you have to remember is there are two different deadlines for Arizona. This time of year in February, there's the deadline for elk and antelope. And then we get to June, you're gonna have another deadline that is for the limited entry deer and the bighorn sheep. And then when we get to the fall, there's another deadline mostly for javelina and turkey and a few other things. So. The deadline that we're talking about right now in this video is the first deadline of the year. That's for elk and antelope. The deadline is January 31st if you do a paper application. And I would strongly suggest you go online and set up an account in their portal because then your deadline is February 13th. And the beauty of that is that one, you're gonna save game and fish more money because they don't have to process checks. They don't have people there opening envelopes, manually inputting all this. So that's more money that can go to conservation. But two, you can buy what's called point guard and we'll get into that later. And you're gonna learn your draw results sooner than the people who mail in paper applications. So this application system in Arizona has some things you need to know, and I'm gonna focus on how it works for us as non-residents, because as non-residents, we're subject to a few restrictions and a few rules that residents are not subject to. And understanding these rules is even more important as a non-resident, because in most instances, non-residents are subject to a cap of no more than 10% of these limited entry tags can go to non-residents. So using an example, if there's a unit that gives away 50 elk tags, us as non-residents can only get five of those tags. The basic thing you need to understand with Arizona is Arizona is what we call a bonus point state. Well, what's a bonus point? And we've done videos about the difference between a bonus point and a preference point. But for Arizona, think about this. If you were buying raffle tickets, you were at your school and you wanted to support the school and they were selling raffle tickets. If you bought five and I bought one, either of us could win, but you have a five time better chance than I do. So that's how bonus points work. The more bonus points you have, the greater the likelihood that you will be the one who has the random number that gets selected. So each one of your quote unquote raffle tickets or bonus points gets converted to a random number. And when you go into the draw, in my example where you have five, they look at which of your five is the lowest random number. And that's the number you get to use when you go into the draw. So if you have five bonus points, you're gonna get five random numbers. I got one bonus point, I get one random number. So the odds are one of your five is gonna be a much lower number, a much lower random number than mine. So the odds are you're probably gonna draw before I do. So that's how bonus points work. Here's a couple little tricks, a couple little benefits that you might wanna take advantage of. Arizona has what's called the Hunter Education bonus point. If you take the Arizona Hunter Education class, you get a bonus point for the rest of your life. That's pretty good. And then they have what's called the loyalty bonus point. And what that means is for any species, if you apply for that species for five years in a row, they give you an extra bonus point for being a loyal supporter of Arizona Game and Fish. Now, if you miss a year, you lose that loyalty point. So once you get in the system and you get five applications in a row, don't ever miss a year because you're gonna lose that loyalty point. And now we're gonna walk through how Arizona does the actual draw process itself based on bonus points. So now we go back to the idea that we said no more than 10% of the tags can go to non-residents. So Arizona breaks their draw into two pieces. 
what they call the first pass and the second pass, and they happen in this order. First pass, there's a reason they call it first pass. 20% of all tags go into this draw. Second pass, 80% or the other remaining tags go into the second pass. So let's talk about what happens in the first pass. Arizona, let's use an example that there are 100 tags. Well, 20% of 100 is 20. So 20 tags will get drawn in this first pass based on who has the most points. It's really almost like a preference point system in this first pass rather than a bonus point system. So the computer says, all right, who are the applicants in here who have the most points? Okay, the first 20, you all get a tag. Good luck, go hunt. Everyone else who didn't draw a tag in that first pass, now their application gets moved over to the second pass. In the second pass, the other 80% of the tags are allocated, and they're allocated based on the bonus point system. So back to my example that if you have five points and I have one, you have about five times better odds that you'll get one of these tags than I will. That's how the second pass works. The second pass is a true bonus point system, allocates all the remaining 80 tags, in my example of having 100 tags. Those 80 people, they get a tag, so 100 tags have been issued, 20 in the first pass, 80 in the second pass. Everyone who didn't draw, you get a bonus point towards next year, and hopefully you'll draw next year. But let's talk about some other finer little things that go into how Arizona does this. Arizona lets you use two choices that they look at, first and second choice, before they go on to the next person. You can actually do more choices than that. But for us who are non-residents, there, there are no leftover tags really for us non-residents after the first and second choice. So I tell non-residents, focus on your first and second choice. So let's say you didn't draw on the first pass and now you're in the second pass, the 80%. You're in there with your bonus points, competing with everybody else, hoping you draw one of these 80 tags I'm using in my example. Well, you get to apply for a first choice and a second choice. So, when your random number is drawn, they look and say, are there any tags left for your first choice? Nope. So then they say, what about your second choice? Oh yeah, there's still five tags left. Oh wow, you get a tag. Or, oh sorry, there are no tags left for your second choice either, sorry. We're gonna give you a bonus point and hopefully next year you'll draw. So that's how Arizona conducts the actual draw itself. And like everything in life, there are always exceptions to every rule. And I told you that there is a 10% cap on non-residents receiving tags in Arizona. There's some exceptions to that. In the elk draw, you'll see that they have a thing called limited opportunity hunts. When it comes to these limited opportunity hunts, we as non-residents are not capped at 10%. And a lot of people say, Randy, how do you get to hunt Arizona so much? Well, three of those hunts you've seen us do in Arizona were limited opportunity hunts. We usually take advantage of one of our two choices being a limited opportunity hunt because as non-residents, we're not subject to the 10% cap in those hunts. The other is Arizona has what's called non-permit deer tags. In other words, you don't even have to draw for these archery non-permit deer tags, they're over the counter. And they're archery hunts, and they're later in the year for both mule deer and for the little whitetail bucks, some people call them coos deer. Uh, those are available to non-residents without any cap. And you've seen us do both the limited opportunity elk hunts and you've seen us do the non-permit deer hunts. So really, here's how it works for a non-resident. You go online, you have to buy your non-resident hunting license, you pay your application fee for your first two choices for whatever species, I would encourage you to apply for all species. Use the portal system so that you can buy this thing called a point guard. What a point guard is, is for I think five extra dollars, 
you're guarding your points to say, if I draw and something happens this year, my calendar, uh, job, family, whatever issues, I cannot make the hunt. It's like buying insurance for five bucks. If you have to turn that tag back in, you get your points back. Worth the five dollars if you think you might have even the slightest conflict that would not allow you to go. Arizona is such a great investment. You build these points over the years and a lot of their really good hunts don't take 15, 20, 25 points like some states. Some of their good hunts you can do with four points. Every year someone draws with zero points. But it's realistic that on some of their later elk rifle hunts, you might be able to draw one of those every four, five, six years. And if you don't draw the elk hunt, let's say, you still can use that license to apply for antelope. You can use it to apply for bighorn sheep, for the limited entry white-tailed deer and limited entry mule deer. And if you don't draw any of those, you can do what I do. You can go to Arizona and you can hunt small game, you can hunt doves, you can hunt quail, you can apply for javelina, get leftover javelina tags, this non-permit archery deer tag. There's just so much opportunity that you can get from that Arizona license. And then we all love to hunt and we want to have a place to hunt. Arizona has public lands in every unit. There's so much public land in Arizona. Finding a place to hunt in Arizona is not going to be a challenge. In addition to having so much public land, Arizona engages with private landowners in this program called, well, I call it VPA, Voluntary Public Access. And in past years, they've had up to 4 million acres of access that is made available to you either to those private lands or using those private lands to access what would otherwise be inaccessible public lands. Four million additional acres for you to go and hunt. Arizona has fantastic hunting. It has fantastic opportunity, amazing access, and it's a fun place to be. Apply, dry your tag, and go and have fun.